Hello, everyone, and welcome to Art Starts Explores. My name is Kay Slater, and uh, I am the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts in Schools. And I'm really excited to be back making with you for a new month, the month of January in a new year, 2021, where we explore string. So this is week one of our workshop series. Um, each week, I'm going to uh, come up with a different way that we can explore string together. But this week, I thought what we could do is we could start by looking at string a little bit differently than maybe you're used to. And I thought we could practice drawing with string. And so if you wanted to follow along with this workshop by making in your own, wherever you are watching with us, um, I recommend that you try and find the following things. I'm going to skip over string and I'm going to go right to paper. And so uh, if you've made with us before, you know that any kind of paper that you can find, paper from the recycling pin, paper that's been uh, ripped, paper that has watermarks on it, that's been drawn on before, that has printing on it. Anything that you can find is great for explorers because nothing we're making is for keeps. So uh, if you can find some paper, that's great. Um, and some mark making tools. So a mark making tool is anything that makes a mark on a page. So that could be markers, that could be pencil crayons, that could be uh, uh, crayons, that could be a, just, just a pencil, um, that could be lipstick, that could be mud, that could be anything that marks up the page. That's a mark making tool. And however you want to mark up the page, that's up to you. And so going right back up to string, when I say string, I really mean any kind of string. And for all of the workshops that we're going to be exploring um, for the month of January, I mean any kind of string. So whether that's you have found some, um, some just basic cotton string that you have laying about, whether that's a shoelace that broke or an old shoelace that you have, maybe you started a crochet or knitting project um, and you're not going to use it anymore. Maybe you want to pull out some of this. This was some hemp string that I was using for this project. Maybe you have some old kite string or some new kite string and you're allowed to use a length of that. Um, maybe you've got some twine, maybe from a camping trip or for bundling things together. Um, whatever you have, maybe you've got some yarn. Maybe it's not just a um, cotton, but maybe you've got some yarn from a big knitting project. Whatever you have, um, that counts as string. Oh, I had one more idea. So if you don't have any of those things, hopefully you've got some floss for flossing your teeth. And so that works as well, right? That's string. So having a piece of floss also works. There are so many different things that you could use to uh, explore for exploring string. And um, I brought them all over, all the string that I could find um, in my studio to bring over here. Um, so anything that you can find is going to be great. Okay, so I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move this over. You know who I am. That's who's speaking or whose voice you're reading in the captions. Okay, and we're gonna be drawing the string and I'll move that up here. All right, those are over there for you to reference at any time. All right, so I'm gonna bring my paper, piece of paper over and we're gonna think about drawing with string. So, to start with, I thought we could just look at string by itself. You know what, I'm gonna even move my paper to the side for now because this surface that I have, the green surface, allows for a higher contrast. And so you can see my string a little bit better. But wherever you're making, if you wanted to use a piece of paper like the, the base where you're going to be drawing, then you can, you can start by doing that there. But I thought what we would do is we would start by just looking at string all by itself, all alone, just the string as a drawing tool. And so um, the, the, the cool thing about string is that it can bend and shape. What, what else do you notice about your string? Oh, mine's knotted there. Oh, I'm gonna pull it. There we go. What do you notice about your string? Oh, I have two pieces, cool. All right, so there's one piece. Um, what do you notice about your string? My, I notice that mine bends, right? So it's, it's really malleable. It's something that I can move around and, uh, and manipulate and shape in different ways. 
What else do you notice about my string or your string? Well, I can layer it on top of each of itself, right? And I can have it so that it doesn't, so that it's so that it's all one line. But I can also have it so that it crosses over, right? So that it shapes on top of it itself. I notice that it's more in the all the shapes that I have here. It's more round than it is any sharp edges. Right, so rather than even if they're if I could describe this as kind of wavy, it's very much uh, kind of a rounder, a rounder, softer shape to to the um, to the line that I can make. So, if you think about when you're drawing, when you're taking a, a mark making tool, something that you hold in your hand and you draw a picture. I think that everything that I did that to describe my string here, I could do with a pen or marker, right? I could draw a line, I could draw a circle, I could layer on top of my lines, I could have a closed shape, I could have an open shape. So really, this becomes um, just like if you were going to look at the, the pencil marks that your pencil makes here, I'm going to just be fun, I'm going to attach my string as if this was me drawing with my my marker right all of a sudden everything that I draw with my marker that's the line that it leaves behind but rather than us being stuck with a permanent line that the marker makes on the page right you can't move it once it's on the page we have so much freedom with this line we can actually get rid of the marker and we can have an, inf an infinite amount of possibilities, all the possibilities, um, and we can reshape these, these lines however we want. So this is a really cool prototype or first draft um, material that you can use if you're thinking about drawing a picture, but you don't wanna, or maybe you don't have a piece of paper, or maybe you just don't wanna mark up the piece of paper. Maybe you just have a nice piece of paper and you wanna start by um, sketching something out to try it out before you draw it. Okay, so here, what if this becomes my page? Right, there's my outline. I'm going to go up here so I'm not off the edge of the page. There you go. So there's my paper, right? There's my edge of my paper. I'm going to take that other piece of string that I had, and let's say I wanted to draw a picture of a face. Okay, so what do I know about a face? I know that there is there's a head. So there's a round shape for a head. It comes down into a neck down here. And then there are shoulders. There we go. Okay. Oh, look at that. It already made this kind of interesting ear shape over here. I like it. Oh, or maybe that's a nose. Oh, yeah. So maybe my character, maybe my figure is looking off to the right. And they've got this really interesting no nose. And their head kind of comes to a point here. So that's the front of them. Wouldn't even have thought of that before. Before I was thinking that maybe the character could be shape, uh, facing um, towards me. But now they're shaped to the right and I wouldn't have thought of that if I hadn't tried it with string first. Okay so they're facing over to the right. What else? What else would they have? Well maybe maybe there is maybe there's an arm. Okay. I'm gonna bring my arm up like this and I'm using all one piece of string but there's no reason and while I didn't have it here if you did have a pair of scissors handy and you had permission to cut up the piece of string that you have, there's no reason why it has to be one continuous mark. You could have multiple pieces. And if you were finished a sewing project or a beading project and you had a whole bunch of small pieces of string, they could also be used for your drawing. Here, I'm gonna do a couple of those for me. And if you don't have a pair of scissors, that's fine. You can just continue with one long piece of string. And I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna keep doing that because that can be really fun and interesting by creating that extra challenge of not having um, 
not having a line that doesn't end. And remember, I'm, I'm treating this outline here like a page. So anything that falls off of the page here, you wouldn't see if we were drawing this with another tool. So I'm just using this as my active space, everything that's inside of the string there. Okay, so now I'm gonna, really wants to bend over here. So I'm gonna bring this over here as my arm. There we go, there's my arm. And then I think I said I wanted to have a teacup. And if I didn't say it, that's what I was thinking. So I think I want to have a little teacup here. They're holding up for tea. There we go. <laughs> so it gets a little messy over here, but that's okay. I can still see it. I can still see it with my imagination as I'm telling the story with the string. It's like they've got um, a pattern on the front of their shirt here. I like it, but I think I'm going to get rid of the teacup because I think that's too many lines over here. Or at least I'm going to do it without the continuous line. Go like that. And maybe I've decided that instead what I want is I actually want um, a sun over in the far corner here. So I'm going to draw a sun with my string. What are you noticing about your string? Actually, it kind of looks like a balloon. Oh, I like that. So not even a sun. I'm going to move this string back to the hand here. Okay. And now it's a balloon that we're holding. Oh, I like it. There we go. What do you notice about your string? My string is kind of uh, kinked and bendy in places and makes it kind of hard for me to move the string sometimes because it's getting caught on itself. And that's okay. I like it. Uh, but it can be it can be challenging and you need to move a little bit slower. What else did you notice? Your string is going to be different than mine, so um, it's going to pose some some different challenges than I had. If I made this a sun again, so I'm going to pull this down. I'm going to go back to just having an arm here. There, and everything past here, right? That's just an infinite space. So that's there. They're holding out their hand like a philosopher. Maybe they're calling for a bird to come. Ooh, that's a cool idea. Okay, so I'm going to move my figure. Ooh, maybe I'll move the paper outline over. That, that might be a bit easier. All these cool challenges that come up when you want to try these things. And because it's not for keeps, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. If I had another piece of paper, if this was actually a piece of paper that I was drawing with and I wanted my figure to come all the way over here, I could cut some of the paper off and then just tape it on this side. But with the string, I can actually just move the string. Okay, so now my paper is, so I've got my figure a little bit further over to the left. And what I liked was I liked this idea that this arm was out as if it was calling a bird. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the other piece of string that I cut off here, and I'm gonna make a branch. There we go, so a branch, a tree off to the side, off the side of the picture that you don't really see. And, oh, and then I'm gonna take these little, these little pieces that I had over here. And then, there's the wing, there's the beak. I'm going to cut off one little piece here again. Yeah, it's kind of a, a woodpecker, right? And so their hands up and making calls saying, come here, come here woodpecker, come off of the tree. And then I think I'm going to, oh, do you see how it's fraying at the end of my string here? Came, it kind of came apart because of the kind of um, string I was using. So now I have even more drawing materials, more ready-mades that I can pull into my page. Cool. So now I've got these really thin lines. So there, there's a, there's an eye. Maybe a mouth. I think they're happy because they're trying to find the, the bird. So I want to tilt it up. Use my scissors. There we go. And if you had like a toothpick or 
uh, a ruler or something something small that you could help manipulate your string around if, if it's getting stuck to your fingers like you saw I used the corner of my scissors there to help me do that you can do that when you have the smaller pieces you're going to discover a whole bunch of things about your your thread that are going to be um, specific to your string right challenges that you have that I don't have and challenges that I have that you might not have. Here, I'm just going to make a couple more twigs here so it looks a little bit more like a branch. And remember I said uh, the different kinds of string. Maybe you've got multiple kinds of string. So you could bring in different kinds of string. I said I had this twine here. My twine's really, really um, bendy. But I like how really textured it is. So I'm going to cut off a piece of this. Yeah, I really like how textured it is. And I kind of moving it around with my fingers to see what happens when I play with the string. There we go. I got it to sit kind of straight. And so now I'm going to make this part of my tree. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to cut this a little bit smaller because it's going all over the place. There we go. So there's the base of my tree. And I like it kind of brown, brown colored. Maybe a few more pieces. And I think this was coming apart as well. I really like that, that thing about string as well is that um, when you have multiple threads, that are all woven together. You have all these extra pieces that you can play with afterwards. You don't have to have just one. It almost kind of looks like the tree has a bunch of leaves on it now. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so I'll keep the white branches. There we go. Now I've got like a textured canopy from the tree and the birds just sticking out of the side of it. Oh, you know what else I could do with this? Just had that idea. Because remember, I'm making along with you. I don't know what's going to happen beforehand. I don't, other than I want to draw with string, we get to explore and come up with ideas um, as we figure them out, as we are exploring the material, as we're looking at our string and seeing what happens. Check it out. There we go. <laughs> now he's got hair. So now that figure has hair. <laughs> so there, I was just drawing with the string alone, Not, nothing else, just, just whatever string I had available here. All right, I'm going to take this apart because that's what, one of the fun things about exploring is that we are not making anything for keeps, We're just trying things out. And I could rebuild that picture if I wanted to. I really like all these ready-mades. I'm going to push these ready-mades over to the side so I can keep working with them. But now that we've explored... Uh, string on its own. Oh, I think I could just sit here for a while and just unpick the twine. It makes such a cool texture. Okay, no, put that aside so we can try out. Uh, now we're going to look at string with friends, also known as multimedia. Okay, I'm going to move this to the side because we already tried alone. Now it's with friends. I was being funny with friends as if string uh, was friends with markers and pencils um, and what have you. So there's that piece of paper that um, that I had before. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in other material. So I have a marker. I have a couple markers off to the side here. Um, I'm going to bring in my markers. Actually, yeah, no, I'm going to bring my markers and I'm going to bring in some pencil crayons. And I'm going to bring in a green. Whatever you have, whatever you, whatever you have available is going to be great. And if you if you uh, just have a pencil. That's that's great. You just have a pen. That's also great. I have a pen. Oh, I have a Sharpie. There we go. Okay. So when I was talking about drawing with friends, this idea of now we're not going to just use string. We're going to use string and. Uh, there's a couple ways we could go about it. We could start by just drawing with the string like before. So now we've got the page. So we don't have to really um, use our a string for the outside because um, we've got the page as the defining page. I'm gonna bring my, I'm gonna bring some uh, floss in. 
because it's a nice green color and you can really see it on top of this page. So you could start by just drawing on the page with the string before you bring anything else in and see what you want to do. Um, I kind of am getting a water vibe from this. So, okay, so I'm going to make this my background. Yeah, there we go. And then this is going to be my, my water. Yeah, because it's got because it's kind of curvy here. And then I'm going to take my uh, my pencil crayons. I want some blue now because I had an idea. There we go. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add snow. Whoop. <laughs> That's right. Move my string back. Nothing's for keeps, so whatever happens if there's a if the string moves around, that's okay. We'll, we'll see what happens when it does that. Maybe you'll come up with a, a new idea. Maybe you'll come up with something even better if it moves. Something that you didn't see until you moved the string. Okay, and then this is my weird shape mound over here. And there we go. So now I've got some snow-capped mountains, and I could keep going. Right? I could. There's no reason why I couldn't continue it without. The string or I could bring my string back in with uh, other pieces of string. Okay so I've got mountains and then I've got this this ocean down here right the water down here and I'm gonna oh yeah I'm gonna bring back my my texture that I really like. Oh and you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna color it because why not? There's no reason why I can't add some color to this twine take it from the brown that I really liked in the tree. There we go. And you can see I'm using a piece of paper underneath when I'm drawing so that I'm not drawing right directly on the surface. So if you're at like a, um, on, a on a desk or a kitchen table or um, in a classroom, and you're, you're using if you're using a desk that isn't protected, make sure you put down some paper first. Okay, there we go. I don't need it to be perfect. I can have some brown in there too. The ocean isn't just one color. But now, I've got these blue pieces. You know how water doesn't really follow any kind of particular pattern? How you can't really tell it to do exactly what you want it to do while it's liquid? So now, I can really take advantage of the fact that string goes in a whole bunch of different ways and directions and put this down right so now i've got my water down here maybe uh maybe i'll add some fish some green fish. And I could keep going. I could keep adding more and more. I could add the, the lines over top of the pencil crayons I used. And so just, just in this scene, do you see I not only just used string and I didn't just use pencil crayon, I also used marker. To color my my string. So this is when we say multimedia, the idea of multi being multiple, being uh, more than one. So we're not just using string, we're not just using pencil crown, we're not just using marker, we're using all of them to create this scene. I'm going to take my string from here. Actually, you know what, I'm going to take everything off the page. And now I'm going to look at what I have here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play around a bit. I'm going to put the fish in the sky and you know what, I'm going to bring my, I'm going to bring my string back in here and I'm going to cut it into smaller pieces. What are you doing? What did your picture end up being? How many different materials did you use? If you only used two last time, could you take it apart? using one thing the same as the last time and then do something different with a different material this time. 
that can be a fun game. And if you are with your siblings or if you are hanging out with somebody over, um, over a voice chat, you could play this game with them where you try and find materials that are in common and you see how many different ways you can draw or you can make a scene using the same materials. Or you could try drawing the same thing, but with different materials that you each find wherever you are um, calling in from. Okay, so I'm going to add some lines here to go along with my, my string to like waves in the water. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn, I'm going to use my marker and I'm going to turn these into jellyfish. Right, because they've kind of got that shape of a jellyfish. Have you seen a jellyfish? They're so interesting looking. Especially when um, you can see them with a specific light behind them. They're so cool. Very alien. Very much not like something you'd ever find on uh, the land. All right, so now we got jellyfish. Let's bring some string back in here again. I'm gonna take my twine again. I really like my twine. <laughs> for something that was so hard for me to draw with because it doesn't really do what you want, it ends up being this really cool texture. So if you find a piece of string and you're like, no, I can't use that because it's all knotted up or um, it's the wrong color or um, it's too thick. Try it anyways, see what happens. Try and push past your initial hesitation to use something because you might, you might find out that it will produce something really cool that you wouldn't have ever tried um, if, you, uh, if you had just gone, no, that's too hard, or no, that's not good enough. That's the cool thing about just exploring when nothing is for keeps because you really can just see what happens. I guess the jellyfish are all dive bombing down to the bottom of the water. Something really interesting is happening down at the bottom of the sea. I guess I could take some green again. I could color some of these in again. Ah, I'm gonna do this maybe once, but then I remembered uh, my, uh, my floss is green. So there, I got one or two. Of those. Good. Then I can take my floss. Let me take just a little bit more. And just because I already used my green floss as waves up here, there's no reason why I can't use them again for something else. You wouldn't, um, you wouldn't say, oh, you can't use a pencil because you already drew. Um, a sun or a tree in a picture when you want to draw water or grass. It's just, it's how you use them and the context of where you put them and the story that it makes when you add them to your page. All right, this is kind of like seaweed or maybe some sea cucumbers. And there we go. So I made uh, a different scene with some of the same string. And I kept the page, right? I didn't want to get rid of my page. You know what? I want to add some fish again down here so that they're all over the page. They're not just on, on the top because they're all over the ocean and they're going in different directions. Let me move this out of the way. Oh, I really, really like that twine. Okay, right? So just, just by flipping over the page, I came up with something different and that can be really, that can be really, really fun. All right, once again, shift it all over the side. My ready-mades are getting wild. Got a whole bunch of different colors now, different lengths. My twine is basically a whole bunch of hair. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna flip over my page, only I'm gonna do the thing that I love to do most in all of my workshops. I'm gonna rip up my page. Because for me, it's not making, it's not exploring unless I get to rip something up. And since this is just paper that we took out of the recycling bin, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to bring my paper together. I'm going to use the marks that bled through on the other side of the page. There we go. 
some layers those together. There's my new paper, but I've got this this cool um, these cool blue marks. You know what? To make it a little bit clearer, I'm going to trace where the blue marks are so that they're through on this side of the page as well. But it doesn't matter that it bled through. It can become part of this side of the picture. All right. There we go. So I have decided and I'm going to take I'm going to take this string and I'm going to take my protection page again and I'm going to color this in and I'm going to do it in black. Now, if you had a white string or a light colored string, you could do this with your markers, right? You could color it. But if you had black string or black thread, or I don't know if you can have black floss. I've never seen black floss. I've seen blue floss and I've seen green floss and I've seen white floss, but I've never seen black floss. That'd be interesting. But if you had that, or maybe you've got, um, if you've got embroidery floss, it's a different kind of floss. That's what uh, people use to make friendship bracelets or to um, embroider on clothing. You might have uh, some black um, embroidery floss, um, black wool, a whole bunch of different options. But if you didn't, you could do what I'm doing and slowly color it in. This is taking a little bit of time, but that's okay. You had a bigger marker, you could probably get more of it down at once. My uh, my Sharpie is kind of thin here, but you can do it. You could do this with a pencil as well. If you wanted to have a gray mark, there's no reason why you couldn't take your pencil or your, even your pencil crown and slowly go along. See what happens. How does it look? You could do it with multiple pieces of string and then see which color you like the best based on how you colored the string. You could use paint, um, find out if crayon works. If you had some pastels, right? Whatever you wanted to use, try it out. If, if you've got permission, there's no reason why you shouldn't try it out to see what happens. Um, and even though you are watching me use a Sharpie to do black on this, um, on the string that I have, your string is going to be different. So just because you're watching me do it doesn't mean that it wouldn't do something different when you try it which is all the more reason why if you wanted to have a black string that was black and you had a Sharpie that you couldn't go ahead and, and color it, right? No reason why. All right, almost done, almost done. And if you're still working on the other ones, if you were still, um, coloring or drawing your first picture, then that's great. You keep doing that. You don't have to uh, switch to a new picture as fast as I do. I wanted to get through a couple of different pictures while I'm making along with you. But if you only just wanted to take a, an hour and draw one picture, then that's fine. Or if you're going really fast and you're getting a whole bunch of them done in the, in the time that it's taking me to color my, my string, then that's fine too. However you're exploring is, uh, is good for you and the tools that you have. I have a bunch of fluff at the end of my Sharpie now. All right, so I have got this marker, or sorry, I've got this, uh, this string, as if I had drawn a line of Sharpie that I could magically manipulate and move around. And I wanted it black because I wanted you to be able to see what I was doing. Okay, so I have decided that this mound of blue that I pulled over was actually, there we go. Oh, I've got extra over here so I can cut that off. There we go. Was actually, what is it actually? <laughs> there we go. Yes, decided maybe somebody who had, maybe some blobby creature that had like 
uh, dripping blue ooze on the top of it. I wanted to make uh, a monster, a monster creature. Which one? What have I not used? Which which one? Oh, I haven't used my big yarn yet. So I'm going to take a couple pieces of the big yarn. Where's my end? There it is. And because this is so thick, I'm just going to cut off a small piece of it to make dots, kind of like pom-poms, which I couldn't, I couldn't have done with smaller thread. Well, maybe I could have, maybe I should try that. All right, so now I got my two eyes, I've got kind of my, you know, my ooze that's coming down. And you know what? I think that this ooze monster actually has a worm friend that hangs out with them. And this worm friend, has wings because why not it's my drawing i can make up whatever i want just like you can oh <laughs> there we go and this worm has got big eye over here there we go <laughs> and so there's there's my composition that i made out of the same piece of paper just by ripping it out and trying it out and i could move this around Maybe they're happy until their worm came out and then they're sad. Or maybe they're feeling kind of sick. How can I show that? Oh, now they're really sad with their eyes apart. Just by moving these things around, right? So with the marker, you can't do that. But with the string, you can. Okay. So I'm going to... Um, I'm going to move this all to the side. There we go. I'm going to keep my ready-mades as I go along, coming up with more and more stuff. And these are ready-mades too. I'm going to move those over to the side and I'm going to take one more page. And remember how I told you that string is great for prototyping. So maybe you have, remember how before we talked about that picture of um, a portrait. And so we decided that um, the figure I think I decided that the figure was going to be have the, the face looking in this direction and that there was a neck, that the shoulder came down, and that they had a hand that came up, and there's the rest of their body, right? And I think that's everything that we had figured out that was in the page. I think there was bird over here as well. But now what I want to do is I want to figure out what kind of facial features. Actually, you know what? I, I wanted to have that teacup, right? So now, because I've got a little bit more control, the marker, there, I've got the teacup. But how does this character feel about the teacup? Well, rather than working in marker or even working in pencil, because I don't know if you've ever used pencil on a page and then tried to erase it and get it to be really clear and clean, and then it kind of smudges up the page no matter how much you try to get your pencil marks up. Well, you don't have to worry about that with the string, right? Because the string is just sitting up on top. And so now we have this, these, um, these ready-mades that we can use to explore. What would it look like? You know, I'm going to make that, oh no, just a bit smaller. There we go. Now we can explore what it looks like. How big of a mouth do we want? How big of an eye? How far back should the eye be? And you see, as I move it, the character has a, a kind of different feel, different emotion every time I move the string around. There's an eyebrow. And remember how I said you could use um, something a little bit sharper, uh, like a toothpick or your scissors or whatever to kind of move it around? if it's getting stuck on your hands it's a little bit easier with the, the pencil so i can move my eyebrows back and move them right on top i can move it so that it's just sitting parallel i can move it so that it's down and i can really see how i want this figure to look before i have to commit to a mark i think i want to also figure out where i want to put the ear
oh, by doing this, kind of like the idea that there isn't any hair. Before I was going to bring some string over and I was going to add a bunch of hair, but I kind of like that there's just this little tuft there. And I wouldn't have known that unless I had tried that with the, if I had, if I hadn't tried that with the string. And I could keep going, I could go, where do I want the edge of their shirt? Do I want them in a short shirt? Do I want them in a tunic? Do I want them in a dress? Do I want them to have a V-neck top? Or do I want them to have an off the shoulder top? Let's go further down. Or do I want them to have a high necked top? Keep going. All these little pieces of string. Do I want them to have a long sleeve shirt? Do I want them to have a medium length? Do I want them to have a t-shirt? Do you see how just by moving some of these lines around, you get a really different feeling to the picture without having to mark up your page. And then when you're done, you can take your mark making tool and you can go, okay, this is where I want the ear to go. And this is where I want the eye to go. Oh, move the eyebrow. So I'm going to, oh, did I like that? Or did I like it angry? Or did I like it kind of off to the, oh, you know what? I think I kind of like it over there. So that's where the eyebrow is going to go. And I didn't really change the mouth. I think I like the mouth. The mouth is there. Oh, and I didn't really like the off the shoulder. But I think I did like the V-neck. Yeah, when it came down like that. Yep. So that's where I'm going to put the V-neck. And I think I like the quarter, the quarter length shirt. Yep, right like there. And then the dress for the tunic. And then I can keep going. I could bring this back and remember how I said about the hair. Maybe I want to see what they will look like with the hat. Or maybe what they would look like with long hair. Or maybe short hair. Really short hair. Or maybe just the outlines, right? Maybe I don't want to color it in. Maybe I just want the edge. Oh, I really like that one. And then maybe a little bit down here. Nope, I don't like that. Oh, do they have mustache? Yes, they do. I like that. Okay, so then I want the hair to come up here and then go kind of out. And then I want a mustache. shape like that. There we go. And so I prototyped that whole picture just by using the string. And I used the black here on the white so it was easy for you to see. But you could use the white string. You could use the the uh, string that you had colored before. You could use big fat yarn. Anything that you want, right, to do the prototype. And if your picture ends up looking cooler with the string, there's no reason why you couldn't glue this on when you're making a final project, right? Maybe you didn't, you didn't realize how cool the yarn was going to be, and then you decided that you just wanted the yarn in your picture all the time. Here, I'm, I'm going to add a cape. So those are a couple of different ways that you can explore drawing with string. Depending on the kind of string you have, how many threads, the string is made up of, how many colors you have available in your mark making tools, how many colors or string you have, how, uh, how big or fat or wide or round your, your yarn is, um, how straight, how flat it sits, how much it obeys you when you move it around, right? Maybe it's wild like the, like the, um, the twine. It doesn't really do what you want, but that's, that's kind of cool. It adds a random element. There's so many factors when you're when you are drawing with string that really let you explore different things um, as you're going through and you're and you're making. 
So as I like to do for all of our videos, I'm going to keep the video running just a little bit longer while I clean up. Everything's going to go either into the garbage can or back into the recycling bin, especially all of this paper, because uh, nothing was for keeps, but except for the ideas uh, that we had as we were making. Thanks so much for joining me this week. I had a really great time with week one exploring string and I will be back uh, for week two when we explore uh, string and we're going to I can give you a little secret. We're going to be exploring um, painting with string next week. So get ready to get a little bit messy. I look forward to seeing you then um, and uh, have, a, have fun making. See you soon.